well hit left field. Back goes Ward. It is gone. Dyron Blanco hits a two-run line drive home run to left. Belted to right field. And Pasquantino picks up the Royals with a bomb to right. And the Royals turn it into a four-run inning. And the Royals pound the Angels last night in Anaheim. 10-4 was the final. Boys in blue improved their record at 23-16. The Angels without Mike Trout, who seems to always be hurt, 14-24. Game two of the series tonight, 8-38. Alec Marsh back on the mound for the Royals after getting hit by uh, a line drive uh, recently. Had to go uh, on the injured list for a short period of time. He's back, and he pitched well as the fifth starter before. Royals win 10-4. They jumped out to a 6-0 lead, led 8-0. Go on to win it by a Final of 10 to 4. Michael Walker picked up the win going six innings, giving up two runs on three hits. He's now two and four on the season. Welcome to the Sports Ticket brought to you by Kiefer Brothers Automotive in Beloit, your home for fast, friendly auto repair. So the Royals uh, start off their road trip, a seven game road trip, in the first of four against the Angels with a nice win. And uh, Blanco last night was the story, the two run homer from him, Pascatino, two run homer. He also stole a couple of bases, uh, and he had a really nice night for the Royals. Uh, did some, it's weird. Like, like, every day I see something like this guy did the first thing so many years, and it's like a weird combination of a bunch hit slash home run slash one stolen base and slash uh, it's like okay for all I know this is being made up yeah. like how do you really know since 1974 <laughs> it's the first guy to have two stolen bases a bunt single and a home run and two doubles I, whatever it is I'll just go with it on time to research it um, coming up on the sports ticket got a lot of local sports uh, results to tell you about also we got our athlete of the week big 12 football post spring ratings and rankings no oklahoma no texas anymore in the big 12 we'll go over that and tell you where k-state and ku stack up cavaliers surprise the celtics last night uh, the thunder lose and we'll tell you why one person in particular is really really pulling for the thunder to win the nba championship the NBA coach fired because, well, the players didn't perform, and it's the coach's fault, apparently. And the WNBA, a lot of excitement in Indiana last night. And good news for WNBA players. We'll explain that. And could the NFL be having games on Netflix? It's on Amazon. they got games you got to pay for if you don't have a subscriber. And now it could be Netflix as well. And we'll update you on the NHL playoffs but we start with regional baseball from yesterday and i'll just jump in and start because i was there yeah uh beloit was number three seed but had to go to marysville marysville was a six seed in the first round uh the four three a regional baseball tournaments and only two of them were a situation where the team that had the better record and the higher seat had to go on the road or a neutral site and not host and beloit was one of those two regionals and uh, marysville jumped all over beloit uh, beloit with some defensive miscues early marysville was up five to nothing and beloit hadn't batted beloit came right back and scored six in the bottom of the first and was six to five after one beloit led 11 to seven after three innings but then marysville after the third inning brought in their best pitcher and it wasn't even close their left-handed pitcher who i understand is going to play is going to pitch i think at Cali Community College, and he's a very talented left-hander, and uh, Beloit did not score a run the rest of the way. Now, I can't explain why in a winner-take-all, your your it's a single elimination tournament, your season's on the line, why you'd wait till you're down 11-7 to to bring in your ace? Yeah. Don't quite understand not that especially one. Especially with the new format. Right, but anyway, it worked out for Marysville because they must have figured we got four more innings, we're going to get five runs and, and beat Beloit, and it did work out for Marysville as Beloit led 11-7 to after three, did not score a run the rest of the way against Marysville's ace left-hander, and uh, Beloit worked out a few jams. And it was 11 to 9 after six. <clears throat> Marysville stranded runners at second and third in the top of the six. Marysville uh, was the visitor, even though they're hosting because they were the uh, lower seed. And then Marysville erupts for nine runs in the top of the seventh. And that ends Beloit's season. And uh, Beloit Trojans finish 12 and 9. <clears throat> and really, to me, what stood out about this one, real quickly, is that. When you're in baseball, and and this applies to any level of baseball, it applies to our youth baseball team that we have that are 10-year-olds, it applies to uh, high school baseball, it applies to college baseball, and obviously we've seen it happen in professional baseball. All you got to do is look at Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson and what they did to the New York Yankees. Two pitchers basically beat the Yankees. All you got to do is look at Madison Bumgarner against the Kansas City Royals. I mean, he almost single-handedly beat the Royals because he pitched in three of the games in the series and they won all three and they just need to find one win somewhere 
somewhere else because the Royals couldn't hit Bumgarner, <clears throat> the Yankees couldn't hit Schilling and Johnson. And so what I'm trying to say is when you have a dominant pitcher uh, and the other team doesn't, huge advantage, gigantic advantage, huge advantage. And Marysville waited, I thought, way too long to bring in their ace, that's for sure, but they got away with it. Uh, we saw Ellsworth do it a few years ago, and it cost them their season. It's like you got to play to win today. You worry about next Tuesday. You might not. You might, all you got to worry about is what time you're going to get up Tuesday because you got no baseball to worry about if you wait too long. We saw Buck Showalter do it in a Major League Baseball playoff game, which was stupid as hell. But anyway, <laughs> and he was he manager of the year multiple times. So even the best managers have these brain farts, I guess. So Marysville got away with it, but. What I wanted to say is Marysville, and it's no disrespect to the Beloit pitchers, because Beloit pitchers are good. They got good pitchers, solid pitchers. Beloit, and nobody's going to argue with me on this, and if they do, they really don't know baseball. Beloit just doesn't have a dominant pitcher. They don't have a pitcher that's going to go out and strike out the side very often. They Against good teams. Now, against bad teams, yes. But Beloit, they need to have good defense. Their pitchers will usually throw strikes. I will say, I thought the pitching staff for Beloit was improved this year from the standpoint that they threw more strikes. And I thought the defense was improved because they threw more strikes. And, and the defense, I thought, was pretty solid for the most part this year. There were moments where the Beloit baseball team had some struggles defensively, like most teams do. But I thought Beloit's pitching was, I thought, a little bit more consistent this year. I thought they threw strikes. They didn't walk as many batters. Uh, in the games that I saw, I think I only missed one doubleheader I didn't see. This year, and I was against Clay Center, who's really, really good, and they got swept in that one. And then also, um, that means that if you're throwing strikes, your defense is going to fall asleep when you're walk, 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 hit batter. You know, all of a sudden the ball hit you. Oh my God, I, I, I was looking in the clouds for a second. It helps when your pitchers throw strikes. So your defense is on its toes, ready to go. I thought Beloit was improved pitching-wise in regards to the depth of their pitching. I thought their defense was improved this year. Uh, and so... But when you get into games against teams that are very good or as good as you or better than you and you're trying to pull off an upset or a team is very similar to you and they're good hitters, if you don't have power strikeout stuff or you really got a two or three pitch repertoire, like you either got to be overpowering with a fastball and move it around like the Marysville kid did yesterday, or you got to have a combination of a changeup, a fastball, maybe change speeds with your fastball, a changeup, got to be really good with your location, or maybe you have to have three pitches. Changeup, fastball, maybe you've got a curveball. Uh, usually at the high school level that we see, fastball, changeup, pretty much two pitches. And if you don't have overpowering stuff, you got to fool people. And when you don't have overpowering stuff, what happens? You don't strike, you don't get as many easy outs. Easy outs are strikeouts. Those are easy outs. You know why they're easy? Because nobody has to field the ball except the catcher catching it. And what made the Royals so good when they won the World Series almost a decade ago in 2015? What was the big thing? They keep the line moving. Right? Put the yeah, ball in play. in play. Okay? But think about that Royals team in 2015. What made the bullpen so good? The Royals had one of the most dominant bullpens in the history of baseball. Yeah. What made the Royals bullpen so good? It was consistent. They knew. No. No, what made the Royals' bullpen so good was they had power arms that could get out of any jam sure. without having the ball ever hit. And all I have to do is go to the Game 6 of the American League Championship Series at home against the Blue Jays when Wade Davis, bases loaded, nobody out. No runs scored and they win. How did he do that? Because if he throws strikes and grooves them in there, odds are sack fly is going to score a run. Mm -hmm. A ground out to the right side is going to score a run. You can't score a run if you can't hit the damn ball. Guess yeah. what? Strike out, strike out, ground ball the moose to first, and the Royals celebrate the pennant. Wade Davis, Greg Holland, and, and, and Kelvin Herrera, those guys, even if they would get into a jam or they would inherit a jam, what made them so great, what made Kurt Schilling so great, Randy Johnson so great, the Aces, the Roger Clemens, the great pitchers of all time, usually, especially in, in probably the last 15, 20 years, they could get strikeouts to get out of jams. And when you're at the high school level, that's amplified even more because your defenses at a high school level are not nearly as good as professional level. And so if you can get the easy outs and strikeouts, guess what? Less balls in play less means less chances for errors, less chance for base runners, right? Unless, unless the catcher's going to drop the third strike every time. So it's no knock on Beloit. There's a lot of other teams. Everybody has their strengths. 
you know, the Royals never didn't have a great starting pitching rotation when they won the World Series. They had guys that get them through five or six. Volquez was probably the most uh, consistent. They turn it over to the bullpen. They had the power arms. And every team could have different strengths and weaknesses. For Beloit, they had good pitchers, but they didn't have that dominant ace. You know, the Royals didn't have a dominant ace at all, but they had a dominant bullpen. And so at the high school level, when you go into a, uh, especially single elimination situations, okay, mm-hmm. and we saw, we've seen Bumgarner do it before for the Giants where they had to win a game, you know, a play-in game or whatever they called it, the extra game. Um, that's a huge advantage. And so when you go against a team that has a dominant pitcher or a pitcher that can overpower you and just blow you away with a fastball or can get has strikeout stuff and your other pitchers are very good at throwing strikes but they're not as overpowering and the ball's going to be put in play more often, advantage to the team that doesn't allow contact as much. And that's pretty simple to figure out. Common yeah, sense, sure. right? And so that was the, that was the to me, you know, people could look at that game yesterday and go, well, you know, Beloit had to play at Marysville. That wasn't fair. Marysville was used to the field. And, and there was a couple instances where there's a big drop off from the infield to the outfield in Marysville. And they knew how to play these weird hops. And one bounced over my son in left field. Of course, he's 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, weird hop. But you're not, once again, Beloit should have been at home. Because they would know the intricacies of their field. There's no doubt about it. And the other thing about Marysville's field, it is gigantic. 380 to center field, left center, right center, 343 down the lines. So Lance Lundeen, Noah Gershner, and Christian Mears are playing outfield. They got way more real estate to cover than they would at Beloit. Mm -hmm. And that was an advantage for Marysville. There's no doubt that was an advantage. Was it a seven-run advantage? I don't think so. Uh, Marysville just flat out outplayed Beloit the last few innings because they were able to put the ball in play. They got base hits. Uh, they got two strike hits. And Beloit, the last four innings against Marysville's ace, just couldn't do that. They did the first three innings. Last four innings, they couldn't. So having an ace pitcher, a dominant pitcher, whether left-handed or right-handed, can go a long way. And, and really, if you think about any sport, if you think about any sport, of all the team sports, the most important person on any of the team sports, even more important than a quarterback on a football team, and quarterback's very important, don't get me wrong, see Patrick Mahomes, but Patrick Mahomes needs five guys up front to block for him, a running back to block for him usually in protection. He's got to throw a ball, and he's got to have multiple different guys catch the ball. That's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, A pitcher, all he needs to do if he's really good is a catcher to catch the third strike. Mm-hmm. And that's why baseball can be boring. A guy can do like Roger Clemens oh, and strike yeah, out sure. 20 in a game. Kerry Wood can strike out 20 in a game. A guy can strike out 16 in a game. And there's hardly any balls put in play. That means it was a dominant performance. You know, the exceptions to the rule for me would be like a Tom Glavin or a Greg Maddox. They weren't overpowering. They still struck out a lot of guys. Maddox threw the ball harder than people think, especially when he was younger. But those guys were so good at changing speeds, moving the ball around location. They were spot on, and they were effective in getting strikeouts, and that's a different way of doing it. At the high school level, your kids aren't usually as advanced. They either got an unbelievable fastball that can blow by you most of the time, or they can change speeds, but they're going to rely on contact. And that's, that's fine. Uh, but it is a lot harder to win games when one pitcher can strike out everybody. The other pitchers got to rely on their defense, and sometimes the defense plays well, sometimes the defense lets you down, and then it's harder as an offense to hit a pitcher that throws extremely hard or has two really great pr- pitches that complement one another to where they're an ace. And so I thought we saw that yesterday, and I still i am shaking my head that Marys will wait until they're down four. <laughs> Mm-hmm. to bring in their ace because that would have been I mean if they didn't score in the in the seventh inning there they scored nine they were down 11 to nine that I mean I think there'd be a lot of people questioning their marriage manager going why the heck did you wait till after you're down four to bring in your ace didn't make a lot of sense to me but yeah but they got away I, I would have been saying the exact same thing once I saw the dude come in I'm like well why wasn't he starting yeah <laughs> yeah I mean I know he came in when they were down now maybe yeah. it was nine to seven technically when he came in I don't remember mm-hmm. for sure but anyway Beloit baseball team they finished their season at 12 and nine so the six seed beat the three the number seven seed Riley County almost knocked off the two seed Nemaw Central Nemaw Central barely won two to one so you had an 18-11 game and you had a 2-1 game. By the way, Marysville scored 14 runs in just two innings. Five in the first, nine in the seventh. In between, Bullitt was fine. 
Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, the first and seventh hurt them, especially the seventh. Nemo Central wins. They move on. They'll take on Marysville, who they played before. Southeast Saline, well, the top half of the bracket had K- uh, Cupcake City written all over it. Southeast Saline uh, beats Sylvan Lucas Lincoln 15 to nothing. And Ellsworth uh, blows out Minneapolis, who's really struggled this year, 15 to nothing. So those games weren't very good. The other, the two in Marysville were very good. Uh, so that's a wrap on baseball, at least for uh, Beloit. Southeast Saline and Ellsworth still alive. Track and field, Dusty. It was a good day. For the Beloit uh, girls track and field team, another big day for Tatum Seifert. Uh, I'll let Dusty go through all of the league track and field results from yesterday. There was a lot of it. Yeah, when everything's on the same day, that makes these results pretty long because there's a lot of kids that had success yesterday in track and field. So uh, NCAA league meet was at Southeast or at Solana, hosted by Southeast. Lane Beloit takes first on the girls' side, rolling to the team championship. Uh, Tatum Seifert, uh, as Wade said, uh, did have a good day again. She won both the discus and shot put gold medals. And uh, uh, league championships, uh, Autumn Lorenzo Beloit winning the javelin, Miley Brown winning the long jump for Beloit, Bentley Pro at the pole vault for the Letty Trojans, and Ashland Knight, the 200-meter dash. Beloit's girls sport by 100-meter relay team also taking first place there yesterday. Southeast Saline ran away with the boys' championship team-wise. Uh, Discus Eli Johnson of Beloit finished in first place uh, as a league champion. Uh, Brooke jo- Brooks Jones of Beloit won the javelin, and Brody Brudro of Beloit took the shot put gold medal there yesterday in the Solana. MPL League meet was at Tescott. Uh, Osborne winning both the girls and boys championship. Bentley Smith of Lincoln, a 100-meter champion on the girls' side uh, in the league. Bethany Similink of Rock Hill sticking the 200. Cody Hill of Sylvan Lucas in the 400. Brianna Reeves brought home three uh, league championships, the 800, 1600, and pole vault. Olivia D- uh, Brianna Reeves of Pike Valley. Uh, Olivia Dale of Lincoln winning the 3,200-meter run. Lincoln winning the 4x100-meter relay on the girls' side, 52-33, a new meet record there. Sylvan Lucas girls took the 4x4 four four and the 4 by eight goes to Osborne as well. High jump, Lauren Brummer of Lakeside, Carly Brummer of Tipton winning the triple jump, Grace William of Osborne, the shot punt, the shot put, excuse me. Uh, Ooh, new uh, category, the shot, the shot punt. Yeah, that would hurt. How would that? Oh my goodness gracious, you'd have to have a foot full of lead. You'd have a broken foot, right? Yeah, people that put the foot down and speed on the interstates would be really good in that competition. Yeah. Grace William winning the shot put for Osborne there at the MPL ter- uh, meet yesterday. And then Gracie Reiner taking home two golds for Osborne and the javelin and the disc on uh, Thursday. On the boys' side, as we mentioned, Osborne again winning the team championship. 100-meter dash goes to Hunter Howell of Osborne. Andy Cooper of Pike Valley won the 200. Mason Baker of Thunder Ridge the 400. Tristan Reynolds of Rock Hills taking the 800. And also the 1600 and 3200, both going to Johnny Hamel from Osborne. Nate Goheen took two gold medals for Osborne, the 110-meter hurdles and the triple jump as well. Sam Kendig winning the 300 hurdles for Osborne. And Osborne sweeping the 4 by one 4 by 4 and 4 by 8 relays. The 4 by 8 was 833.16, a meet record there. Also, uh, Xavier Miller of Lincoln winning the high jump. Nate Myers of Rock Hills takes the league championship in the long jump. And Joshua Ferguson of Thunder Ridge winning both the shot and discus there yesterday. Rounding it out from yesterday's activity, the Midcona League meet at Russell. As team wise on the girls' side, uh, Norton took first place. Madison Howland of Smith Center continued her outstanding freshman season that started way back in the fall in cross country as a state champion, and she's rolling here, league champion in the 1600 and 3200 meter run for Smith Center yesterday in Russell. And on the boys' side, Hoxie took the team championship. Tegan McKenzie, uh, first place for Smith Center in the long jump, and a league championship for Gavin Hickert for Smith Center in the 3200 meter run. So. Those are the gold medal winners. A lot of athletes had an outstanding day. It just didn't have to be a gold medal to have a very good day, and that's what we have time to pass along because, again, all the league meets were held yesterday in the area. So uh, if you want the full results from all those meets, they are all posted at nckssports.com. And in relation to yesterday's activity at uh, the MPL League meet in Tescott, due to his uh, outstanding day and really outstanding spring, Osborne senior Nathan Goheen has been named the NCKSports.com Cunningham Fiber Athlete of the Week as he's having, again, an outstanding spring in track. We mentioned that he won the two individual golds yesterday, taking first place in both the 110-meter hurdles and also the triple jump, but he was also part of uh, the 4x100-meter relay and the 4x400-meter relay that took first place. Uh, so Goheen ended up with four gold yesterday uh, uh, two individually and two as part of relays they're at the MPL League meet in Tescott, and he's taken home 14 gold medals this season, seven individually, seven as part of relays. He won the 110-meter hurdles in five events, putting up a season-high mark of 1590 at the Kayser Relays in Osborne April 19th, and he's also taken first place in the triple jump twice, again, at the Kayser Relays along with the MPL meet. Four-by-one team, as 
claimed the gold four times, and the 4 by 4 has also claimed the gold four times this spring. Overall, Goheen has 11 total medals individually and another 13 as part of relay teams here in 2024. So it's been a great spring for Nate, and he's our Athlete of the Week from NCKSports.com in Cunningham Fiber. So that catches you up there as far as uh, how everything's going uh, as far as uh, track and field is concerned. One other note I do want to pass along. There is softball today for the Bullet Lady Trojans. They start at 4 o'clock this afternoon in a doubleheader. Uh, most of the, the spring sports season is, is coming to a close here as far as the regular season and postseason coming up. But there is softball today for Bullet to make up doubleheader with Concordia this afternoon at 4 o'clock. So uh, that's a look at what's going on in local sports here in North Central Kansas. Again, NCKSports.com for all the schedules and now postseason brackets and assignments posted there. Okay, so I want to uh, make a little observation here about it makes, makes me, 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 my experience yesterday coming back from <clears throat> Marysville. So I'm sure other people go through some of these things sometimes. I don't want to come off as a chronic complainer here, but I may. <laughs> anyway, but um, so anyway, we were leaving Marysville. The game lasted three hours. When there's 29 runs in a baseball <laughs> game and the first two innings took an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, I thought we were going to be there till midnight, the way that one was going. But uh, anyway, we got done. Um, it was, it, was t- it started at 4. We left about right at 7. And we were debating what to do to eat. And there were certain places we didn't want to go to. There was one we considered, but it was a mile back to the east. And we we're like, you know, we'll just get on the road. And maybe we'll stop and, and grab something in Belleville. Okay? And we were hungry, but we we're like, we maybe we'll stop in Belleville. And we got to Belleville. All of a sudden, I had this idea. Okay? Now... For those of you, don't freak out. And I'm yes, they're going to get a free plug, but it's not going to work out as well as you may think. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I I don't want to always eat the same thing, and I've been eating fast food a lot lately and running around with my head cut off, as has my whole family with everything going on. And so, what's the thing that you usually do when you're in a hurry? You grab fast food. It's you know, you know there's chicken, uh, hamburgers, French fries, you know, pop, whatever. And so, I really wasn't in the mood for hamburgers or anything like that. Neither was my wife. And so, we got close to Belleville, and I said, "Well, you know, they have Dairy Queen here in Belleville, but right now, I'm just not wanting that type of food right now." And I love Dairy Queen. Okay, I love Dairy Queen. Love the ice cream. Love the food. But sometimes you want to change it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Arby's is in Concordia. I said, you know, Arby's, I like roast beef sandwich, something different for a change. And they've got usually a pretty good deal. It used to be five for 10. And I said, now I think it's four for 10. Inflation, of course. Mm-hmm. So I pull up on my phone to make sure that they're open, right? Because it was getting close to about eight o'clock. It was a little after eight o'clock and we were on the highway uh, by the time we got back to the junction there by Belleville. And so I went ahead and pulled up and it said that Arby's was open till 11. I'm like, okay, cool. Awesome. And it, it didn't say anything about drive through or the lobby. It just said they're open till 11. I'm like rock on. So I'm craving some roast beef sandwiches thinking that's a nice change mm-hmm. of pace. So we pull into the parking lot to Arby's there in Concordia and there's this long line and drive through. I'm like, Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> that's Okay. We'll just pull in, we'll park, and we'll go inside and be quicker. I've done that many times at other places. I go up to the door. There's a type-up sign. Lobby closes at 8. drive through only. <laughs> pull on the handle, of course, it's locked. Mm-hmm. Turn around. I'm like, this will take forever to get food. I'm not waiting in a drive through line that long. So here's complaint number one. Is it too hard for the website and your location hours to say something about that yeah. your lobby closes at 8 o'clock? Is there anything illegal about that so that you would know? Or maybe put it on your marquee so that everybody... Does, because we weren't the only ones. Somebody pulled in right after us, and I saw them the same thing. They got out of the car, went to, and pulled on the door. Guess what? We saw those people later on at Taco John's. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go down the road, and my wife's like, well, I guess we go to Taco John's. I'm like, okay, we'll go to Taco John's. So we pull into Taco John's in Concordia, and you know they they have good food too. And uh, don't, we haven't been there very often because we you know we're not usually in Concordia a lot or whatever. So we we roll into Taco John's and and we're like, you know what? I, I said I'm driving. It we'll just go in and sit down and eat this. We were going to grab the Arby's on the road. Mm-hmm. It'd be a lot easier to handle a roast beef sandwich while you're driving than you know a taco pizza or tacos. That's not really good driving food, right? Hamburgers, yeah. sandwiches, that works out pretty good. 
French fries aren't that big a deal. Chicken nuggets work out pretty good. So we go and talk to John's like, we'll just go ahead and sit down. I know we'll get home a little bit later. I know the kids have school tomorrow, but we'll just go ahead and go in there. It didn't look like they were overly busy. There was, a, there was somebody in front of us ordering. There was a few vehicles in drive through We go in, and uh, we order our food. Um, and so then we know that you know we, we don't need to get the combo meals. We don't need all the pops and all the potato olays. I mean, we got some olays. Those are good, whatever. Dusty ate Taco John's recently <laughs> when we were coming back on a Royals bus trip. The first thing I get when I get Dusty there. pounded out a pound of potato olays, and then he had another pound of olays How many is in the biggest thing you can oh, get? Yeah. That's how many I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're good. So anyway, as I get done ordering my food at Taco John's, and this, I've done this many places before. Instead of buying the combo meal and I don't need the fries or I don't need the pop or I know I have a pop in my car or I know I'm going to be home soon and I can have a pop, I'm going to go ahead and just I say, hey, can I have a cup for cup water? Of water yeah. Cup of water. Right? I just need a cup. I'm not buying a bottle of water. Just give me a cup. I'll go get water. Now, some people probably abuse that and they actually pour pop in the cup and they cheat the system, which let's be honest. You paid for that a long time ago with paying, you know, a dollar ninety nine, two forty nine for pop, which cost restaurants not very much. I know this for a fact. I used to work in the restaurant industry. I don't know what I know when I was in college and I know that was a long time ago, twenty some years ago. Okay, longer. But anyway, when I worked at a restaurant, the person that was in charge of the restaurant told me that the average pop cost the restaurant three cents. And they would charge buck forty nine. Now pops you can charge as much. I mean, I've seen two ninety nine. Okay, mm-hmm. for a medium or large pop, which seems like a lot. And I'm guessing it probably costs more than three cents now for the for the restaurant. But even if it's 50 cents, which I highly doubt is that much, but even if it's 50, that's a gigantic markup. So, you know, if you feel like you rationalize telling somebody I want a cup for water and then you just go ahead and pour pop in that cup, I'm not going to judge you. OK, not saying it's probably <laughs> right, but I'm not saying I'm going to judge you and turn you into the cops. But. I get water. When I get a cup, I get water. Okay? So I got a cup. Or no, I didn't get a cup. I asked, could I have? Could we have some cups for water? He goes, sure. How many cups would you like? And we had four people. I said, well, three will be, three will be good enough. So he, he, he says, okay. And he hits the registry. He says, that'll be 65 cents. I said, what? Yeah. Places are charging for water now. No. No. Not for the water. For the cup. For the cup. Well. <laughs> for the cup. I said, What? He said, yeah, it's 65 cents. I said, for, for, for water? He goes, well, the, the cups cost us. I said, really? I said, I'll tell you what I said. I said, Jesus Christ. That's what I said. <laughs> okay, sorry, I used the Lord's name in vain. And there was a lady next to me from Clay Center. She kind of looked at me kind of thinking, you know, what the dear Lord, they can't afford cups. So guess what I did? I said, well, then I don't want it. And the guy, the poor guy, I felt sorry for him because he's just doing his yeah. job, right? I didn't get mad at him, but I was like, dear Lord, this first time I've ever been char- been charged for cups to go get my own water. <laughs> Can I charge you? Like, do I have do I, I have to go get my own water? I mean, sh- shouldn't that like pay for itself? Whatever. So I get the, uh, uh, I don't get the cups. And he, he's very nice, and he says, because I'm sure it's not the first time it's happened, he said, now, if you, have a cu- if you have a cup in your car, you could bring that in and put water in it, and there's no charge. Mm-hmm. It's because it's the cup. They're not charging for the water. They're charging for the cup. I'm like, okay. I said, honey, go get my blender bottle out of the car. <laughs> so I get this 20-ounce <laughs> blender bottle she brings in, and I fill it up with water. So I'm not trying to be a chronic complainer, but a couple of little, little tiny things to throw out there. One. If if your if your lobby is going to be closed, you probably should have more than a tiny little sign on the front window. Maybe, especially if you have a marquee outside your establishment, maybe that'd be good to let people know. It's mm-hmm. drive through only after eight. That'd be helpful, especially some older people that like pull in, gotta take two minutes to get out of their car. They're not in the best shape. Walk all the way up and then start to pull on the door and read the sign. You know, maybe it would be nice if you just you got a marquee there. You put your special on there. Could you maybe throw that? Here's the thing: when I look it up on the website and it has your location in your restaurant is it too much to just say hey lobby closes at eight drive through open to 11 which by the way i know it's possible to do that because that is in some cases in kansas city where i've been it will differentiate differentiate oh yeah for this, sure. this one for concordia did not so you didn't know so that was a little bit irritating uh and then the irritating part after that is charging me for cups boy it's a tough time if taco john's can't afford to give me a plastic cup 
Once again, bigger things in life to worry about. Don't want to come across as a chronic complainer. Just a few observations that I had there. I'll give you one more to complain about here. How in the hell do people charge for air? Air should be free. Pretty much everywhere now. I know. Air should be free. I'm breathing air. What's next? You're going to charge me the air I breathe during the show in studio? I mean, now granted, radio is air waves, so I guess we're charging for air, so I'm a hypocrite. But that's actual radio advertising, okay? But the fact that you have to pay to get air when your tire is flat seems a little bit ridiculous to me. Now, maybe I'm all wet. It was an unbelievable luxury to have all those years, and now we've just gotten with the times. It's like, hey, you know, if we provide a compressor with air, we're going to charge you for it, and, and maybe so. But I'm old school from that standpoint. I'm like charging for air. Okie dokie. So it's different times, people. Different times. I sound like an old curmudgeon. No, no I, since you brought it up, I, I've got a beef, too, that I'd like to get, Woo! get out here yes! and make public. We're going to make a new segment on Fridays. <laughs> Friday, be, Beef Friday. It's actually funny because like the place that I'm going to complain about it had the, the motto, where's the beef? Ooh, right? <laughs> you're going to Wendy's now, huh? So anyway, I, I like their Frosties. Hey, so do I, and that's where my beef is. Um, Ooh, I can't play. I just, I'll put, I don't even care that I'm putting them on blast telling you where they're at, because they're not an advertiser on our station. The one, if you ever go to the Salina Wendy's out by Walmart, don't expect to uh, get a chocolate frosty. Wow, I've been <laughs> the there. The last three times. times I've been there. They're out of chocolate? They don't have chocolate. I make things easy, right? Like, I'm single. I'm by myself. I order everything I get through the app because it's just quicker. I'm going to be able to get there. I can sure. go through the drive-thru. I can pick it up. I go to the window. You for, you're to the speaker. You check in. You say your name. The, the mobile order for Dusty. They don't tell you that they don't have it then. They just wait until you get into the window. Yep. And they're like, uh, we don't have a chocolate process. Now, I go to Wendy's not just for the Prosty, so I, most of the time I've got food with it, sure. too. So I'm like, and I've actually got, there's a deal that I've got in the app where I can get, like, like a free junior frosty with purchase anytime I go there, right? And so the the first time it happened, I was like, okay, I didn't pay for it. Whatever, dude. I don't need it. Because it, it was 10, 20, and they were closed at 11 o'clock and said they shut their frosty machine off. I'm like, if you're open till 11, the frosty machine should 11. be open till The frosty machine should at least be on until 10, 50, right? Like, <laughs> you mean, you're for, this is 40 minutes before you're closed, buddy. Yeah. And, and he's like, I don't to tell you. And I'm like, it was free, dude. I don't need it. I was just frustrated. It was late. I just wanted to get out of town, but I wanted a little thing to keep me going on the road when I was going home. And the next time, ordered it with food, nothing. They didn't have chocolate. This is the last time I go, which was literally this week on Tuesday on my way back from Kansas City. And uh, I get it, order it. I had a free drink in the app with purchase. My purchase was a large frosty, right? <laughs> I get up there. He's like, we don't have chocolate. We have orange dream sickle. Do you want that? I'm like, no, buddy, if I, I wanted orange chocolate. dream sickle, I would have ordered orange dream sickle. <laughs> I want chocolate. <laughs> I've been to a couple of them. They're like, is vanilla okay? No, no, it is not because that is the most bland vanilla ice cream I've ever had in my entire life. I said yes once. Uh-huh. I'll never say yes again if vanilla is okay because I do not like the vanilla frost. I don't either. I like chocolate. And I love the peppermint one during the winter. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, buddy, no. If I wanted Orange Dream Sickle, I'd have ordered Orange Dream Sickle. Mm-hmm. My issue, not necessarily, is with the fact that they don't have it. But if you don't have it, fix your damn app and not let me order it. And say out of, you don't out of have stock it. or How whatever. hard is that? Sold out, out of stock. And so, it's I, listen, I get it. You go to McDonald's, sometimes their ice cream machine ain't working. I was just going to say, like, and every like, other time you go to McDonald's, I'm sorry, the ice cream machine is not working. Like, dear God, do you ever get that thing fixed? Yeah. So my vehicle's never going through that drive through Again, I'm like, three, it's three strikes, you're out, right? Well, like, go, you better go to the one in Ohio. I you do, and I've here. never had an issue with I that. I was going to say, one in Ohio, I've never had an issue with and, But that's so deep in town is, that you got to go into town it to is. go to it. This True. one's right off the interstate. True. It's easy. You're going back home. And, right. And you just leave. And it's like, dude, I, I get it. Sometimes you're not going to have stuff. But right. if you don't have it, don't let me order it. Yeah. Like, how are you just letting me pay for it? And the, the first two, three, four times this has ever happened to me, they won't right. even give me a refund. They finally actually gave me a refund this well, time because they say they can't refund the app. You, to me, like, to me, this is me. This is me. If you order a chocolate frosty and they don't have a chocolate frosty, obviously you get you should get your money back, okay, or cancel that part. If they say, if they say, do you, oh, well, we could give you a vanilla frosty instead. You say are, at, at half price. Yeah, because I didn't like you said. I didn't order a vanilla frosty. I don't want a vanilla frosty. Now I got to pay full price for something I really don't want. Yeah. 
Why would I do that? You know, it's kind of like me. I'm not paying 65 cents. I know I sound cheap. I'm not paying 65 cents for your plastic cups that you apparently got to charge for. I'll grab one out of my car. Okay? So be it. Yeah. Um, got to draw the line somewhere. You know, right? And I know we kind of sound like old curmudgeons when we say these things. And by the way, I do want to preface this, too. People are listening. We're having some fun with this. So don't get all riled up and all up in arms here. You know, have a thick skin a little bit. The other thing, too, is if you're listening to this and you're getting a little bit upset or if you're a little bit riled up or you might be saying, amen, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And you have all kinds of stories. I will say that I worked in the restaurant industry. I've worked in not the fast food industry, but I've worked at a couple different restaurants when I was in college. I have a great appreciation for people that cook in the back. I have great appreciation for people that run those businesses. I have a great appreciation uh, for being a waiter or a waitress or a bartender. Okay, there's a lot of things. Things that people don't know behind the scenes. And so I try to be very, very careful that when I am frustrated, like I talked about yesterday, for a quick moment, I was immediately frustrated. Like, you're going to charge me for a cup? But I know the guy, the kid, the guy, you know, behind the cashier register, unless he's the manager, which he really doesn't have a say on that either, especially if you're a franchise, that you got to go by the rules of the company and the corporation. So if you really have a problem, it's you got to take it up with the big haunches that you're never going to see ever because they're living in mansions on hilltops because they got tons of franchises of whatever they started. And Wendy's, you know, has their daughter's picture on the damn cup. So yeah. Wendy, <laughs> the, the people of Wendy's are doing just fine, the big time people. Um, and, and I will say, you know, some of this, you know, we talk about the app. Why can't it be, you know, why don't it say out of stock? I sit here and say, why can't you, you know, have it updated on your, on the, on, when you go on a search for Arby's and Concordia, you would say that your, your drive through is only thing open. Lobby closes at eight. You know, how hard are those things to do? Maybe it's a problem that, uh, with management or a problem with the company itself that doesn't allow their own employees to update that, and they would like to, and the employees are frustrated as well. And the other thing I'll say, it took a long time to get our food at Taco John's, and they weren't su- – they were the drive through got kind of busy. Inside, they were somewhat busy, and I'm like, okay, I kind of get why Arby's closed their lobby at 8 because – there's less to deal with. You just mm-hmm. deal with one car per person or one car and drive through and you take care of them. You don't have to worry about waiting on people, taking orders in the at the front desk and do drive through. Taco John's was was open inside and out, which I appreciate, but it took us 20 to 25 minutes before our food was we finally got it. And this is supposed to be fast food. The ironic thing I saw was I got a taco pizza, which I haven't had one in a long time, and they've got that Taco John's right now. I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool." And then I'm waiting on the food and I see the the deal and it rotates on their on their wall and it says for a limited time taco pizza ready in minutes it makes it sound like it's fast <laughs> i said well that's false advertising and i caught myself i'm like well technically 25 minutes is still minutes it's still minute it didn't take an hour it didn't so. say in <laughs> in quick minutes or less than five minutes but it was kind of ironic so but i but having said that i you know i i, I will say this your fast food places aren't the only ones. Restaurants, fast food places, your sit down places. I mean, a lot of businesses this applies to. And I, and I think, you know, I've tried to have way more patience than I maybe used to because I at least recognize, okay, and I hope more people recognize this, that people aren't there to just wait on you. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to take care of everybody. So you're not the only person that's waiting on your food. I looked around, there are people behind us waiting on their food. We just got to wait for our food to get done and, and you go with it. Uh, you can scream and yell and holler. Is it going to make anything better? No, it's not. In fact, they're probably going to spit in your food. So that's probably not a good idea either. <laughs> okay. And I've been saying all this, anybody that works at Arby's or Taco John's may never want to, they see me again. They're like, oh, we'll take care of Gershner. Or Wendy's in Salina. Like, oh, we see that Dennis guy. You mean Dennis? <laughs> we don't care okay so but what i do i know that they're short staffed there a lot there's not there's lots of openings you know i i've cracked up every once in a while when somebody's contacting me hey you know of any jobs dear god do you live underneath a rock yeah there's tons of jobs available it's just a matter how picky you are if you want a job you can get a job and and now fast food and restaurants are paying more per hour than they used to inflation's part of that so forth minimum wage hikes this and that but there's lots of jobs available out there it's just a matter how picky and selective you are so don't sit here and tell me there's no jobs out there no there are it's just a matter how picky you are but for those people that are working in the fast food industry, and, and I've gotten to know some of the people that work at Dairy Queen in Beloit, you know, really nice people, you know, and I have conversations with mm-hmm, them, for sure. uh, you know, and, and the people, you know, at Sonic and, you know, Pizza Hut and I'm all the, all the restaurants I go to uh, locally. I mean, I have no problem with them. Sometimes I have to wait longer than I maybe anticipate. And, and but I got to realize there's 20, 20 cars in drive through after mm-hmm. a ball game. It might take a little bit of time for before yeah, I get my exactly. ice cream, but there's some people don't realize that or understand it. And so. 
I try to, you know, I'm having fun with what I brought up today, and I hesitated initially to talk about it because I don't want people to take it the wrong way and go, that I'm complaining and that service sucks and then people are horrible. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying, man, there would be something to make things convenient that doesn't seem like it would take a lot to, you know, include on your on your I think most on of- online to say your lobby's closed at eight. I don't think it's too too hard to 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 you know. I don't know, not charge 65 cents for a cup of water or put it on your menu to say that cups are that cost something. So it's not a surprise. Maybe that should be included. Once again, that's not really the employees that are working there are no. at least fault. And so what happens is, like I talked about earlier, and I joked about it, the, the, the owner of Wendy's, the founder of Wendy's or the owners of a whole bunch of franchises of Wendy's, for example, you, they, 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 they are they are they're up on wherever they live doing just fine and they are made out of teflon you can never touch them you will never be able to complain to them you have to email something mail something and they won't probably respond they're front it, they are the, the what's the word i'm looking for the front lines are the people getting paid 15 bucks an hour or used to be 750 an hour and those are the people that take the heat and there is a story and it's actually came out especially after covid because everybody after covid just thought they could treat everybody like a piece mm-hmm. of crap and that's wrong and they said that, and I've said this on the show before, that they said that, what was it, 80%, that, what was it, a whole bunch of people quit the restaurant business, waiting tables, doing this, because people are just mean and horrible people. And they asked those people, if you could name the price of what you would get paid, would you go back? And 80%, I believe it was 80, it was at least 50, might have been 80, a majority of the people that quit the restaurant industry said, there is no price, I'm not going back. You can raise my wage and double it. I'm not going back. Mm-hmm. Because kind of like we talk about officiating in sports, right? Why do we have a shortage? Because people get tired of dealing with jackasses. And if you are in the service industry and you're somebody that you know waits on tables or bartends or whatever, I can see why you get tired of dealing with people that aren't very nice. And you know, here's the thing. Sometimes it's not your fault at all. In fact, most of the time, it's not these pe- people's fault at all that work there. It's somebody else's fault higher up mismanagement could be that they're short staffed and somebody had a job to do and and didn't and called in sick or somebody didn't have the decency to tell everybody i'm not coming into work and now you got a short staff busting their butt to serve you and you treat them like crap because it's not going as fast as you want what you don't realize is they're short three people Mm -hmm. or they just can't find enough people to work and so we do need to and then you need to look around and actually open your damn eyes and understand geez you know what Every table here is full. Maybe, just maybe, I'm not more important than everybody else in this place. (laughs) So I will stand up for people that work in the fast food industry or just in a restaurant in general. Because, especially when you wait on tables, I've said this before, your food can be late, not because of the waiter or waitress, could be because the cooks are behind. Could be because there was a mix-up, could be the waiter or waitress's fault. Could be, who knows what it is. We don't know. But what people do is they take it out on the frontline people, right? You take it out on the waiter. You take it out on the waitress. You take it out on, well, why? My water's empty. Where the hell have you been? I'm sorry. My name is Mary, and I have 24 tables, and I'm the only waitress on staff tonight. And you know what Mary wants to say? Shut the hell up, (laughs) and I want to spit in your food. You know? And I wouldn't blame her. But some people can just be horribly mean. So I don't want people to think that I'm trying to be mean about mentioning, hey, it'd be nice to know if your lobby was closed instead of running up to the door and all these people get out of their cars and then pull and then see the sign that isn't really big. You know, maybe conveniently it would be nice to somehow make that easier to understand or find out, whatever. And if you're going to charge for a cup, for the love of God, put it on the menu so I'm not shocked by this. Yeah. Once again, somebody would be like, well, you're going to complain about 65 cents. Well, you talked about well, five ninety nine for a subscription to Peacock, and you acted like that's not that big a deal. So what do you get off, Gershner? We're talking about 65 cents for three plastic cups. I'm like, I'm just making a point. I, I'm not sitting here saying I couldn't afford it. I'm not sitting here saying that I uh, made a big scene about it. And I'm not sitting here saying that Everybody needs to change their policy because of it. I'm just saying, when I walked in Taco John's, I didn't know that cups cost money for water. <laughs> Whereas, I knew if I wanted to watch a Chiefs Dolphins game, I knew I had to pay five ninety nine to get a subscription to Peacock. That's what I'm, my point is. 
Yeah, you'd know up front, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, no, and I, then I know not to, to ask for a cup for water. Most I just be like, hey, I'm going to go without water, or I'm going to buy the cup so I can get water, or I'm going to buy a pop, or I'm just going to go with no liquid and go strictly off the potato lace. Yeah. yeah. We, it's uh, most of what we're talking about here could be taken care of by corporate, right? Like that's and that's not, it's, that's it's, the it's people that you need the, to deal. Yeah, with. it's not the and, and I try to remember that when i go to this place and or that place it's like and i am usually not typically a person that really overly cares about the speed in which i get my food because i understand that there's a lot of people in the line or or whoever now if if there's three people there and it took me 15 minutes to get my food then i'll probably complain about the speed at which it took to get my food if i'm at a fast food place but um typically i that doesn't really bother me i mean i get it sometimes i'm gonna be in line for five minutes sometimes i'm gonna be in line for 15 that but when it's like if if i'm ordering this on the app and you're telling me i don't have it three straight times or if you're charging me 65 cents for three cups that i didn't know was happening yeah and again with the drive through thing i've seen that a lot of places too it's like you go up i mean there was a place with my mom and i tried to go in haze like three times in a row the lobby was always closed mm-hmm. and it's like well we're not eating this in the car because it's messy and so we're not going through the drive through and so it's like we changed had to change our planes because it wasn't on the line or anywhere until you got to the front door mm-hmm. that the lobby was closed and it's like okay I'll give you one more quick one. We'll get back to the sports mm-hmm. part of it. But I'm sure a lot of people out there probably can relate to this, too. And this goes back to the Taco John's thing. So so when you order something and when somebody says, what sides do you want? Or what do you want as your side? That's almost always included. Okay. Or you order specifically a side knowing it's extra. Right. Yeah. Okay. So at Taco John's, I get to taco pizza. I've never had taco pizza there. Apparently, it's for a limited time. Available in just minutes. And so the, the, the taco pizza, and he says, what side would you like with that? I'm like, well, what are my choices? He goes, well, there's a spicy nacho cheese. There's a guacamole. There's a fiesta deal. I'm like, oh, well, you know, what, what do people normally do? He's like, well, it depends if you like spicy or not, whatever. He's very nice. And I said, oh, I, I, you know what? I'll just go with the guacamole. Okay. So I, uh, I, he hands me the receipt when I'm done. My wife goes to get the blender bottle out of the car for water. I go to the table. I sit down. I look at my bill. It was a dollar forty nine for guac. That, now, to me, that's misleading and oh, deceiving. Yeah, sure. That's deceiving because you didn't tell me what you should be doing, and I'm sure corporates taught them how to do this. Crap, oh yeah, for sure. But you should be telling me, would you like? Would you like a side on the top with the taco pizza? That'll be. It's a dollar forty nine for an extra side. Would you like a side? <laughs> No, what they do is they they know you're going to think it comes with it. They're going to hope you don't look at your receipt. Some people might go back and say, I want my $1.49 mm-hmm. back. That was deceiving. I didn't. I was like, I ordered it. I'll still eat the guac. No big deal. I didn't make us think about it. I was more I was more like interested in the charging of cups. But that to me, that that is actually more deceiving. Oh, because for sure. you shouldn't, they should tell you. Hey, what side would you like with that? They should tell you for an for an extra dollar forty nine or for an additional dollar forty nine, you can have a side. Would you like to add a side to your order? That would at least explain it better. But when you say a taco pizza, what would you like as your side? You make it sound like it comes with it. Yeah, absolutely. and then you get the bill and you've already ordered it, and they got you for another dollar forty nine. Right. That's convenient. Yeah, I remember when a lot of these. Uh burger joints would, would switch their like value menus to small medium large right and, oh and, like, i always say would, i don't want any of you there. would you would order it and they would be like you want that medium or large yeah they wouldn't even say small like yeah. small is the default yeah, right like the that's the regular right, right. so yeah, you think you have like, to choose me you want or medium or large and i'm like uh neither i want the normal right small if that's what the norm i said Usually, I would just say, whatever the regular order is. What I, I say is, I, I, whatever the regular is, I don't want to pay extra yeah. to make it clear. Yeah. But exactly. if they say medium or large, how many people went ahead and said, okay, medium or large, thinking small is not an option, so they play on the psychosis of your brain, exactly. and guess what people do? I'll go with medium. medium oh, yeah. that's a dollar. Oh, yeah. I got large, $1.99. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're I mean, absolutely they, right. They did that. They were, that's deceiving they, they to me. They did that that's deceiving as well. Absolutely. And it's the same type of thing. It's like some people aren't even going to pay attention to that. What they should say is what I paid for. What they should say is you want to upgrade to a medium for an extra 69 cents or a large for 99. That's how they should do it. Yeah. And I don't even actually, honestly, I don't even care if they say the price if, but upgrade should be the word that should be in there. Do you want to upgrade medium or large? Right. Because upgrading, I think you should be able to understand that that would be, that's not going to be the same price. Right. You would think so. (laughs) Yeah. You would think so. I'm a regular here. I get free upgrades. Um, This is sports related because we got to stop at a lot of these. That's right. Coming back from places. 
don't know where we're going with this at all times. Y'all have sports. been there in high school sports where you're like, you're coming home and you're like, you're where hungry, do we stop to eat? Your kids are whining. They want something to eat. You say, what sounds good? I don't know. You pick something. They hate the <laughs> you choice. Pick, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dear Lord. I didn't. I didn't want that. Well, I asked you and waited five minutes for an answer, and you said you didn't care. Then I pick it, Dad. I don't want tacos. <laughs> but you didn't say that. We already pulled in, dear Lord. I wanted chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, go to KFC. Sorry. <laughs> it's an hour away. Drive yourself there. All right, uh, Big Twelve football. Well, let, let's before I get to that. As offseason continues, K-State men's basketball team had another player from the transfer portal. Cal State Fullerton transfer guard Max Jones signed with Jerome Tang's squad. Two seasons with Cal State Fullerton. Averaged 15 points, three rebounds, two assists. Shot 39% from three this past season. Big 12 football post-spring rankings, okay? There is no Oklahoma or Texas, so, we not, so one and two is available now. Because you just automatically default. Texas, Oklahoma, one, two. Yeah. Utah is number one, Big 12 football post-spring power rankings, if you care about these things. And I know it's May. <laughs> Utah's number one, K-State number two, Avery Johnson era. KU is number three, and to me that depends a lot on Jalen Daniels and if he's actually going to be playing and not hurt. Oklahoma State four, Arizona five, Iowa State six, West Virginia seven, Central Florida eight, Texas Tech nine, TCU ten, Colorado, sorry John Bowden, eleven. Baylor 12, BYU 13, Cincinnati 14, Houston 15, Arizona State 16. That's right. The Big 12 is going to have 16 schools because it just makes sense. 12. Absolutely. 12, 16 is the new 12. Everybody knows this. So Houston and Arizona State bringing up the rear. Kansas third, Kansas State second, and Utah number one, which Utah has won the Pac-12 a few times recently. I get that. K-State obviously has got talent coming back. And Avery Johnson, people are excited about that. Kansas is building momentum last couple of years. And John Bowden said Kansas is going to win the Big 12 this year in football. That's what John Bowden said, Mr. Buff himself. So take it to the bank. Put all your money on it. If you lose your money, all you got to do is find John Bowden and tell him it's his fault and demand your money back. And John will pay you back. Yeah. Why? Because John <laughs> is important. I'm not, John makes uh, a lot of money at Superintendent Golf Course. Yeah, absolutely, I'm, dude. That guy is rolling. <laughs> no, he, he, no, he, no, no, no. He, he only, he, no, no. He's not rolling. And grass, maybe, and not anything <laughs> bad here. It's just he takes care of the grass and the and and the fairways and everything else. So we're just messing with John. But Utah, K State, KU, number one, two, and three. You have any problem with that? You no, like I would uh, honestly. I, I think a lot of those are going to probably have Utah number one, just mm-hmm. based on what they won the Pac-12 twice, not both the last two years, haven't they? Or at, at least two of the last three. Yeah, two of the last Maybe three. Maybe the last yeah. two. Yeah. Um, either either no, way. They, they didn't, they they didn't, didn't win it this year. year so it was, I think it was the two years before Yeah, that. they beat USC, I think, two straight years. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, you know, they they had success again this past year. They were toward the top of the league. And, mm-hmm. and so I think a lot of people are going to do that because they know them. And they've been in the mix. Um, but after that, it's hey. a lot of these things I'm seeing are actually K-State. Even yeah. ahead of Utah, I've seen a few of those. Me too. And I've seen Kansas at, Anywhere from seven and now to three. So. Hey, I mean, if you're a K-State football fan, KU football fan, you have reason to be optimistic and excited sure. about the upcoming football season. That's great for the rivalry as well. And KU was so close to beating K-State last year. Uh, perhaps KU will finally beat K-State this year. Uh, but it'll have to be in Manhattan if they're going to do it. 10.03 is our time. Back in 30 seconds. So look at the NBA, NHL playoffs. And the WNBA, big news out of WNBA. And I'll tell you about a man that is screaming crazily in favor of the Thunder to win the NBA title, and he has many reasons why he's doing that. State, regional, and national sports talk on your schedule. The Sports Ticket Podcast. Subscribe via Apple, Google, and TuneIn Podcasts or sunflowerstateradio.com. Extended warranties on vehicles have become a very popular thing. You may have bought one, but what do you do to take advantage of the benefits when you need them? Kiever Brothers Automotive in Beloit works with most all warranty contracts, and we can be your advocate when you need repairs. Just bring us your car, your concerns, and a copy of the warranty contract, and we take care of the rest. Let our fast, friendly service help you get the most out of your extended warranty contract. Find Kiever Brothers Automotive just south of the courthouse in Beloit or on the web at keeverbrothers.com. And that will do it. An impressive Game 2 win from the Cleveland Cavaliers. And this series is tied at one game apiece. Full disclosure, everyone that listens to this show, you should not be listening to me 
for gambling advice on picking a team to win an NBA playoff game, I said it's a mismatch and the Cavs will be lucky to win a game. And the Cavs won last night by 24 in Boston. The Celtics are so Jekyll and Hyde. Like, Tatum will be great one game. The Celtics look awesome. They think it looks like they can beat everybody on, on earth. And then they'll come back and they'll lay an egg. And they're not good at home in the playoffs for the last three years. All the talent they got. I can't quite figure this out. Anyway, Cavaliers crushed the Celtics last night in Boston. Donovan Mitchell came high 29. And TV, TV executives are like, we got to rig it better. <laughs> in the West, the Mavericks pick up a big road win. They beat the Thunder 119-110 to in OKC. is a first playoff loss in the postseason so far. The Thunder, the Thunder are 5-1. Mm-hmm. and one, And now I see a headline on ESPN. Should the Thunder be worried? Dear God, they weren't going to go undefeated in the postseason. <laughs> Luca came back twenty nine point double double, as did PJ Washington. Uh, they had double; he had double double, and uh, they were twelve and nineteen from three. That series tied one apiece. The Knicks are up two on the Pacers. Game three tonight in Indianapolis on ESPN at six. They're missing Onanobi; he's out with a hamstring uh, strain. Uh, the T Wolves are up two on the Nuggets in the West with Game three at eight thirty in Minnesota tonight. The, the defending champions they got their backs to the wall, but they've got now the NBA MVP once again in Nikola Jokic. Knicks Pacers, I think Pacers win tonight. Knicks are short. Handed Pacers have every reason in the world. Plus, I think after what Rick Carlisle said, that they might get a few calls tonight. And, you know, but it's better for the NBA to rig this game. The Pacers win to make it a series. You don't want sweeps very often. More money in the coffer for everybody else. I'm saying Pacers win tonight in game three. I agree with that. So go ahead and bet the Knicks. Um, <laughs> T Wolves Nuggets. You think the Nuggets get that one tonight? I think the Timberwolves are going to win the night and they're going to avoid a sweep on. Sunday or whatever the Nuggets next time they play. So you think the T Wolves will be up three zero? Yeah, and the Nuggets will win Game Four. Yeah, going back to Denver. Yeah, I think the Nuggets win tonight. Uh, and then I wouldn't be surprised if the T Wolves win Game Four. So I'm just the opposite of you. There. Yeah, I think it, I think Denver's going to get at least one of these. I now. agree with that. I, I don't think they're going to get swept. Um, former NBA official Tim Donaghy, who I've talked about on that whole docu series about he was a rogue NBA ref, which is a bunch of baloney. Um, he told a local radio station here, or not local, but a, a local radio station near him, I guess. Listen to this. He said, and I quote: "They used to put us in a room, us NBA officials." In a room, he's a former NBA official, Tim Donaghy, and he said, and I quote, they used to put us in a room, show us plays that concentrate on that, on that they didn't want us to miss. It was always for those big market teams and always against mid-market teams. It's not fixed, but they definitely put one team at an advantage. We'd walk out of those pregame meetings and say, oh man, they really want the Lakers to win tonight. If you're getting paid 25000 for each playoff game, you want the series to extend too. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it yeah, for sure, not, it and, and I agree with it's not means it's not fixed or it's rigged, but it there is an advantage. No, I, I buy it. I truly do. Um, there is a guy that really, really, really wants the Thunder to win the NBA title, and let me explain why. Wayne Shelton. I need to get to know Wayne Shelton. Seems like a good dude. So. He picked the Rangers to win the World Series last year, which was pretty gutsy. I mean, the Rangers weren't great odds to win it. He picked the Chiefs to repeat. And he had the Thunder winning the NBA title. Rangers, check. Yeah. Chiefs, check. Wayne Shelton saw the Thunder last year be a 10 seed in the play-on tournament, and he liked the potential. The Thunder before the season were 70 to 1 to win the NBA title. OKC was the final piece of Wayne Shelton's puzzle. He packaged the three championship future bets into a $100 parlay to build a new futures ticket. The payout $1.7 million. If the Thunder win the NBA title. That's a heck of a return on your money. Rangers, yeah. A three team parlay to win championships. Rangers, Chiefs, Thunder. Wayne Shelton, he's cheering for the Thunder. For sure. <laughs> man, oh man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's uh, the last the last part of that is is awfully uh, optimistic for sure. No doubt. When you make that bet. Frank Vogel fired after a forty nine thirty three season with the Phoenix Suns. They were swept by the T Wolves. Because, you know, when you can't trade any of the players, can't get rid of them when they suck, you just got to get rid of the coach because that's all you have left. Congrats to the Suns. 
Um, who were swept by the T-Wolves. <laughs> Do they fire Mike Malone if the Nuggets get swept by the T-Wolves? Probably not, after winning a title. Yeah, I know. By the way, Frank Vogel has won a title as, as a coach, but he's a dunce now. <laughs> the WNBA has formally announced a plan to begin using charter flights on a full-time basis this season. This comes just days after Commissioner Kathy Engelbert told sports editors at a meeting in New York City that the league will make the transition to charter flights as soon as we can get planes in places. Delta Airlines will be the primary transportation provider for the program, which will cost about $25 million per year over the next two seasons. So good news for WNBA players and well overdue. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm like, oh, yeah, this you don't even think about that. Like that's not already happening in a professional sports league. WNBA last night, preseason game in Indianapolis. Caitlin Clark, first home game as a member of the Indiana Fever. Preseason game. Doesn't even count for the standings. 13,000 people there watching. Mm-hmm. She is the Steph Curry of women's basketball. No question. If you didn't like paying five ninety nine for Peacock to watch a Chiefs Dolphins playoff game in NFL, if you don't like having to pay for a, subscri- a subscription to Amazon to watch Thursday night NFL football, I've got bad news for you. <laughs> this only gets worse. Our reports now that Netflix will wind up carrying two NFL games scheduled for Christmas Day, per a bevy of sources. So let's and listen. If you're complaining about five ninety nine for Peacock, you should be really ticked off now. Because what is the rate for Netflix now? It continues to go up. And Netflix has and some good programs. And now you can do like a, an ad-supported plan for cheaper. I I don't even know. I think the... Netflix, think here we go. I got it right here. Their standard with ads is six ninety nine, according to Netflix website. Uh, standard is 1549 Yeah, 1549 Premium I Premium is twenty two ninety nine, And uh, I'll let you in on something. So... Somehow I had access to a Netflix thing, like a lot of people have over years, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and people shared this and this and whatever, and they're cracking down on that. So they had the three hour roast of Tom Brady. I didn't realize it was three hours, and I saw clips yeah. on, on social media. So the other day, I, I hadn't clicked on my Netflix app for a long time. I don't have a subscription. So uh, I click on it, and I was, I was automatically in there. I didn't have to log in, it just went straight into Netflix, and, and boom, I, I watched. Part of the roast, which was pretty funny and really, 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 really raunchy. And so I watched it, and I watched about half of it. So I'm like, all right, cool. And then my son says, "That's not, I tried that. I can't get in. How can you watch Netflix and I can't? I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm special. Yesterday, after the evening prior when he brought that up, like he couldn't have access to it, but I did. Yesterday, I go in to watch the rest of the roast. Couldn't get in. Couldn't get in! <laughs> Dang it, son! If you would have just kept your mouth shut. So, I do not want to pay six ninety nine to watch the last hour and a half of the roast. However, you do get a lot more than just the roast for six ninety nine. But, getting back to the point. We have warned people on this show for at least two or three years, if not longer. And all of you can fight it until the cows come home. And you're going to lose. You're going to lose. And you could act all tough. I draw the line. I'm not paying five ninety nine for Peacock. That's insane. I'm not going to be like everybody else and pay for Amazon. I don't want to watch those NFL games. Actually, I really, really do on Thursday night. But I'm not going to do it till my team plays on one of those. And then I will cave. But I'm not going to like it. And I'm going to let everybody know I don't like it. Well, you think that was bad. Netflix, you're going to be paying at least six ninety nine, if not more, to watch Christmas Day games if your team's in it. This is where everything is going. It is going streaming. Eventually, you will not have. It'll be all through the streaming. We've talked about this before at nauseum, but this is where everything is going. And so you're sitting here as a consumer, and I understand the frustration. Don't get me wrong; I understand the frustration. I already pay for sports packages, tiers on whether it's through cable, whether it's through fiber, whether it's through uh, DirecTV, Dish, YouTube, Hulu, whatever. All, there's also there are all kinds of platforms, right? But you're getting to the point where, like, I already pay for this, and I get all of this within my package. Now I got to pay extra for Peacock to watch a game. Now I got to pay extra to watch. Amazon games on Thursday, Amazon. I don't, I got to pay extra for that. Now I got to pay to get a subscription for Netflix and I got to remember to cancel in 30 days. So I don't get charged again. 
I understand the frustration. Don't get me wrong, because you're like, I'm paying for all this, and now that's not included in what I pay for, and i got to pay extra because they're pulling stuff for it used to be on these channels, and they're shoving it onto streaming platforms and different companies like Amazon and Netflix and Peacock. I get your angst. I truly do. I make fun of it, but I get it. I do. I don't like it either. What do you do to change it? You have to get unified across the country and say, we're not going to watch it. That's what people tried to do with the Peacock thing. Guess what? Failed miserably, <laughs> as we knew it would, because Chiefs fans are going to pay the five ninety nine, and people across the country were going to pay to watch a playoff game. It was a brilliant move to put that game on Peacock. You may hate it. You may have been really fighting it. You may have not spent the money. I did, but maybe you didn't. You drew the line at five ninety nine, much like I drew the line at sixty five cents for three <laughs> plastic cups. I am with you. I, I understand it. Um, and yes, you waste your money in many different ways, and we have different habits, and then you, you don't worry about that, but then you draw the line at five ninety nine. But I get how it keeps adding up, and I think that's where people are really getting to. I already pay for this, and now I'm getting less with this because it's getting pulled. These games that I figured I was going to get with my bundle is now on things that are outside my bundle. So now i got to make decisions. And let's let's be honest. We know inflation. We're dealing with it. Taxes go higher. Taxes never tend to go down, right? And inflation goes up, and then prices don't tend to come down as much as, as fast as they go up. And so I understand the angst to it. But the only way you're going to change it is you got to get people across the country unified, and good luck with that, to where you all say, we're not going to pay to watch the games on Netflix. We're going to draw our line there. We're not going to watch Thursday night NFL football on Amazon. We're not going to watch the playoff game between the Chiefs and the Dolphins, even though I'm a diehard Chiefs fan. Even though it, I could, I would have to spend five hundred bucks to watch the game per ticket at Arrowhead. But I'm going to draw a line at five ninety nine, which five ninety nine seems like a pretty good deal compared to five hundred bucks. But that's just me. At the same time, that's still five ninety nine that you didn't think you were going to have to pay for. I get it. And so it's the principle of the thing, right? Just like me and the cups, it's yeah. the principle of the thing. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, you're really, really going to have two choices. One, you can have your own private protest within your own house, <laughs> or you pay for it. That's it. It's just like me. I have my little protest about the cups today. Is that going to change anything? No. Can I get people unified across the country to make us think about it? No. So I have fun with it today on the show. That's the last I probably mentioned of it. But I understand the frustration. For sure, I, the Royals are on Apple Plus tonight. Like I'm not watching the Royals tonight yeah. because I'm not paying for Apple Plus for one game out of. When I watch on Bally, you right? got to play. You got to pay. Yeah, and, and you if, didn't have to yeah. used to before. You got yeah. Fox Sports Midwest. You got to watch it all the time. Yeah, if you don't have a, a cable package that has the Royals on it, I do. Um, but if you don't, then you have to pay, you have to pay Bally Plus or you know Bally Sports Extra, or whatever. So much whatever a month. it's called, and and it's twenty bucks a month for one network i think that's right yeah but you got that's what it was anyway it's what it used to be anyway i don't know if they've changed that and brought that down this season or not but my my contention on that deal was like, i'll pay the 20 bucks a month if i get all the Bally regional networks in the package because i would Royals. like to watch the spurs because they're on Bally too right and so i was like that'd be fun um so you know i i i'm not paying for apple plus for one of 162 but i will pay for Peacock for one of one because you could lose that game and the playoffs could be over, right? And right. your season could be over. Um I I already had Peacock and I didn't I didn't even actually use my Peacock to watch the game. I was watching it at somebody else's place, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I I have it and, and it, it was fine anyway. But it is. I mean and you know, you go back and I and I said it back then and and just to you know, you get different listeners on these shows and, and different people tune in at different times but the thing that people need to understand about this is this is not a sports thing it is that we're talking about right now and there's gonna be two games on on netflix on christmas day whatever this is an everything thing everything you're going to consume video wise in the next five to ten years is going to be coming over an internet connection yeah yeah. it's going to be streaming Mm -hmm. and so when we say get used to it when I say get used to it, I'm not talking about just get used to it in a sports realm. I'm talking about All the way across get the used to it. Everything that I watch in my apartment comes over a stream on an internet connection. You got movies now. Unless that I are, throw a DVD into my DVD yeah. player, obviously. You got movies now Literally. that aren't even coming in theaters as much. They're, I mean, they still do, but there's some that are coming on only yeah. Apple Plus or only Oh, this. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's it's killing theaters, to be completely honest it's with you. It's not helping part no. of it. There's, there's a lot of them that are not doing well no. because of that. Those, and, Which is you know, unfortunate. The, the big actors... They're going where the money's going, and the money's going to streaming too, right? And it so it comes it's back just, to the yeah. dollar, doesn't it? Yep. So, 
I know that's ever since COVID, you know, that's been a big problem when they introduced, hey, can't go to the theater, so we're just going to throw this on streaming right right away so you can watch it. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to change our date that we were going to release it. And that opened a huge box of, of things, not even just if, if you're doing it just for Netflix or Hulu or Prime, whatever, just even the big studios that plan on mm. studio releases that are going into theaters. They're, I went and watched a movie three weeks ago, and it's already available for streaming. Yeah. It used to be you had to wait a long yeah. time before it was on DVD or whatever, yeah. and now you can get it pretty it's quickly. It's like a, a month later, or in some case, even sooner than that. It's mm. on the apps to go rent you know, you're paying a lot to rent it but or to buy it but you know mm-hmm. that obviously goes down as, as it would in a normal situation but yeah it's crazy i mean it's you get used to it is the the thing to say because this is not just a sports thing this is all of your video consumption everything will be online regular tv viewing on your cbs programs nbc abc programs it all going to be i mean all you got to do is look at the they got paramount plus peacock it's all tied on and that's why we're saying cunningham fiber now that's right that's exactly <laughs> that's right literally the reason that is that's right <laughs> hey conference usa announced that missouri state university will join their league in july of 2025 so the bears are going to be part of conference usa and we conclude the show with the nhl playoffs off the stick of all off puck comes in front take a three games to none lead. And the Rangers dominating that series now up 3-0 with that 3-2 victory in overtime over the Hurricanes in the West. The Stars won 5-3 to even their series at 1 with the Colorado Avalanche. Tonight in the Eastern Conference, Bruins and Panthers tied 1-1. Game 3 in Boston at 6. And at 9 o'clock tonight, the Canucks are up 1-0 after their crazy comeback in Game 1. They are taking on the Edmonton Oilers in Game 2 tonight at 9 o'clock in Vancouver. For the latest sports information, local sports information is available to you at nckssports.com. We have tons of track and field results from yesterday from the NCAA League meet, the NPL League meet, also the Mid-Continent League League meet. So go check all that out, the regional baseball information. Uh, once again, softball today. It's a makeup schedule games. Uh, Concordia at Beloit for a doubleheader in softball. That starts at 4 o'clock today. So take note of that. For, if you have not discovered nckssports.com yet, you must have just moved into the area <laughs> or you really have not been paying attention. It is there for you. nckssports.com. It has... Our all league, our all league archives, all league performers, a list going back many years. We've got uh, previous year's standings for all these leagues and different team sports. We got uh, schedules for all the sports for high school teams covering NPL, the NCAA, Concordia Smith Center. Uh, we got the regional baseball stuff updated. We've got uh, the athletes of the week, including the new one we just revealed today from Osborne with uh, with Goheen. So there's lots for you to check out. You just need to understand. NCKSSports.com. Here's the great thing. You go there once, bookmark it. Oh, you don't know what a bookmark is? I don't have time to explain anything <laughs> to you, but if you bookmark it, then you'll have it there and you just click on it every single time and you don't even remember the website and how to type it in anymore. Okay? And if you can't find you can't remember it for sure, just type in, you know, on a Google, type in NCKS Sports or you know, North Central Kansas Sports, and it will come up and give you the chance to check yeah. it out. And it is free for you. We don't charge a subscribership, okay, to view it because our sponsors help pay the freight for all that. So if you see those sponsors on there, you can thank them as well. Anything to add, Mr. Dinas? I mean, Dinas. <laughs> Danes, Dines, Denise uh, doesn't have much more to add. I think, I think <laughs> what we've established today, boys and girls, and what we've learned today is that uh, Wade doesn't want to pay for cups um, Wade doesn't like when the lobby is closed at 8 o'clock, and Dusty just wants his damn chocolate frosty. Punch your ticket to local sports talk with the Sports Ticket Podcast. Now available via Apple, Google, and TuneIn Podcasts or sunflowerstateradio.com.